All right, uh, welcome to the copy stand segment of the workflow guide for Roger Williams. Um, the first step um, is first of here's the copy stand. Um, the copy stand, what copy stand is actually is we are literally just taking books or original images and placing them and photographing them. Um, it's pretty basic and simple as that. Um, Secondly, um, what we want to do um, is you want to turn this machine on. We already turned it on, um, but um, it needs to warm up for about 10 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes. Um, we also have the light, main light, fluorescent light off in here, and we've put on these um, lamps because it's uh, better for a copy stand for the white balance. Um, and that's how we have it set. Um, next step is to actually begin after everything's been warmed up. Um, here's the camera. Um, it's mounted on the camera base, uh, I mean on the copy stand base. Um, I'll show you actually how to put it on. Um, there's a little knob in the back here. Um, if you look at this, it has this base here. Um, on the back wh where you would put the tripod um, screws, we, it's basically the same thing and you mount this onto the copy stand mount. And pretty easy, just like that. After that, um, we can go ahead and turn the camera on. And um, it's everything is tethered in. Um, the USB cable is connected to the computer, and the computer um, is set up in Lightroom. Uh, the camera is already linked up to Lightroom in there. Um, if you have a little battery. In the back here, this is where the battery goes in, and there you go, put that in. If the battery is not charged, um, we have this battery charger, and we have a couple extra batteries if you need them. Um, we have this bag down here, battery charger, and extra batteries. Turn the camera back on again, make sure the lens cap is off. Um, and we want to make sure that this is level um, when you're taking photographs. Make sure this bevel is here and it's level in the middle because um, otherwise the images could be warped in um, after you shoot them. Um, okay, next step is going to be to get a book and put, place it on here. Um, we have the camera settings already in place, uh, but I'm just going to show you just to make sure that they're set properly. Um, when you turn the camera on, it goes into Camera Control Pro, which is highlighted, just press OK. This window will pop up. Um, this program is connected to the computer so that you can do um, shooting directly onto the computer. Uh, we have it set, the camera set at um, 1 40th of a second shutter speed and f-stop 11 for the aperture and everything else should be set in there. One other thing is to check in the camera for the white balance setting, which it's set at pre. That's how you want it to be set for what we're doing. And um, if everything is correct there, you can just go ahead, fresh battery and everything, and we'll be ready to go. All right, now I'll show you how to actually do this. Um, just open up to an image in a book here. Um, when you're doing copy stand, um, the images need to be in landscape uh, format when you're shooting because of the way the camera lens. It's important to have this set. Um, otherwise, if you turn it this way, it's, it won't get the whole image. Um, so make sure that it's going to be for a large image, especially that it's in landscape um, format. Next step will be to get the glass. Um, we have these three pieces of glass here, one of them 8 by 10 and then there's a couple larger sizes um, depending on the size of the image that you're shooting. Um, for this image we sh should be able to do 8 by 10 piece of glass. I'm going to make sure this glass is clean. Um, we usually uh, get Windex and just clean it off because you get fingerprints on it. Okay, and the purpose of this glass is it tends to keep the image flat. Um, it usually weighs things down so that you can get a nice flat image because otherwise, again, it will be 
warped if you don't actually have it flattened out. Um, so it's alrighty. It's also important to make sure that the paper is not in the way of the of the of the light itself. We don't want shadows getting on the image. All right, we should be set to go here. Um, the next step will be to show you. You just like look through the viewfinder, and, um, and if everything is set right, um, should be able to shoot. If it's a smaller image, we want to make sure that it's um, turned about ten degrees either way, right or left, because um, sometimes there's more ray patterns in books, and this tends to sort of reset that, or it seems to fix it pretty well. Um, Alright, well I guess we'll go ahead and shoot this. If you go back over in the Camera Control Pro, um, we have this autofocus and shoot button. That's the button we're going to be using. Um, Lightroom needs to be open. This is the program that we set things into. Um, make sure that it's in, uh, and make sure that Lightroom is in the number four underscore uncorrected um, catalog. Um, there's one other catalog called the archives. We don't want to be in that. You want to be in this one. Um, and. Basically, we should just be ready to go. Go ahead and shoot this image. Make sure that this is flat. Keep that pressed down. Sometimes you have to do some acrobatics. <laughs> and then autofocus and shoot. And the image will come up on here. Um, what you'll see, this is in the auto imported fo uh, photos folder. Um, you want to create another folder for it. Um, whatever the order number is, you're going to create that folder number and that's where the image is going to go into. On, uh, on li in Lightroom, you want to press right click on the mouse and go to create folder inside auto imported photos. Um, let's call this folder 2222 and just hit create. And when you're finished doing your workflow of, the, of your images, want to just like highlight all those images, control A, and then pull those images into that folder. Basically you can just drag the images right into the folder like this and that usually will work. Um, and then do the cropping and editing um, afterwards and renaming. Um, one other thing I want to mention is the um, if you have a larger image, um, we have this other mode in uh, in, on this Nikon, on this camera that's called Live View. Um, this would be a good example right here. Um, an image that's this size will require a bigger, um, either you have to sort of, uh, you know, it might require a bigger lens, but most likely you just need to actually um, bring this up so you can actually see the full image. Um, an image like this will use a larger piece of glass. It's 11 by 17. And you basically just do what you would do for the other images, except in camera control, you are going to click the LV button, Live View. And ta-da, you'll see the image. And just sort of play around with this to get it so that the whole image is in there. It might require you to bring this up a little bit more. Okay, that looks about right. And this is a great way to just see it. So, I mean, otherwise we'd have to stand on a stool or something, but this is a great method, you know, and have to get up, so. <laughs> um, and then basically, just like the other images for it, just press autofocus and shoot. And that should work. Um, and if the image doesn't look good, um, I'm going to show you this one thing to get the images out of here. You're going to press right click and press delete photo. And what will pop up is another window that says delete from disk, remove, cancel. You want to press delete from disk, not remove. Delete from disk will erase the image entirely.